What's up everyone? Welcome back to my channel. Another video of Indian student in Canada series. In this video, I'm going to share the journey that I went through to get my permanent residency. I came to Canada in 2012 as a student. So if you haven't checked my other videos in this series, uh, I have the links in the description where I, you know, talked about my student life and other stuff, uh, literally from beginning of my career as a student in Canada till now. So um, now I was going through this 2012 studies and then I finished my graduation in 2013, December. So I started to look for a job and pretty much I got my full time job in 2014, June. So at this point, point in time the rule for getting a permanent residency in Canada was uh, you need to have a uh, one year of work experience in the related field job so skilled worker um, qualification um, so I was happy because I got this job so literally from there within one year I'll qualify and once I qualify I apply at that point once you apply, you will get it like literally in uh, eight months if everything goes well, if all the documents are fine and everything. So this was going well. And uh, I got married in December 2014. So pretty much six months in the work experience and I got married. And 2015, January or February came in the Canada announced that they're changing the PR rules. So no more skilled worker uh, PR program. And here on only Express Entry, the new program that is called Express Entry, where they give you, it's pretty much like merit based. Um, you have, to, once you enter your profile into Express Entry, you will be given points for every individual areas like you know your age your education in canada your education back home your master degree uh, your work experience international and in canada so you get points for different things number of year of experience and your ielts exam like your english core ex points for those things so they allot points for everything so I i'm here got married in 2014 now i, I pretty much got one year experience even through the express entry the minimum qualification is you need to have one year experience so um and also another qualification was you need to have at least uh, um six no band less than six in every um in every english module so il score you need to have each band no band less than six so these are all the requirements and by mid of uh, 2015, I qualified. So lazy asshole, I'm a lazy asshole. At that time, I should have written my English IELTS exam literally uh, when I started my full-time job, but I didn't do that. So I literally started my IELTS exam as soon as I qualified for, you know, for PR, which was after one year of work experience. This is like in 2015 mid. So now I have one year experience. So I started my else exam and I didn't get the score because the minimum, as I said, the minimum experience was IELTS no band less than six. And my English sucks at that time. Actually at that time, I never really read in much of English books or anything. So my English was really bad. And I was also like a little bit lazy. I, I, I admit I was lazy. I was not working as hard as I supposed to, to get that PR. That was my fault. So if, he would, if I would have, um, you know, worked hard to get the IELTS score, I would have got my PR long time ago. I, I would have saved so much hustle for myself. So if you were in my shoe, take that one month period, go study hard for IELTS and get the score and get the PR done. Because once you have a PR, you have so many opportunities open for you. So continue with my journey. So one, 2015 mid, I started ex writing exams literally it took me like eight months finally after three attempts yes three IELTS attempts the last attempt I got six 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 that's right 
I, I'm not kidding. I'm serious. Like I got literally six bands in every module. That was the minimum requirement. So still my points were low. So I waited till I had two years work experience because the second year work experience will give you some more points. And by that time, my wife started working. So she was about to finish one year work experience. So she got some points and her English was also super bad. Like she got like five or something she tried. And so because I got married and my points was taken down on certain areas and they give points to her, but she don't get full points. So that means I lost some points because I got married. So getting married is a good thing. And also <laughs> to get the peer is kind of a, a sad thing. So um, I, I was trying different things like trying to close work permit because my work permit is about to expire in next one year. If I don't get my peer, I'll be kicked out of the country. So my fear started to kick in. Um, I was writing this IELTS exam and finally this IELTS exam came in, score came in, um, applied still the express entry points. They're like, you know, the express entry is like they pick the draw. They take uh, every week two or three, like 1,000, 2,000 applicants and they process their application based on the merit base. Like, you know, express entry is like you, you put your application and you got some points and if you're a top thousand points holder, your application will be picked. So they do that every week, pretty much. Sometimes once in two weeks, sometimes once in three weeks. That's uh, up to Canadian government. So I, I still like my application didn't get picked up because my points were still low. And in this time, thank God, one good thing that I did was I hired an immigration lawyer and this lawyer looked at all my details. So this is the tip I give. If you're new to Canada or if you're, if you even in the process of applying your education to Canada, do this mandatory. Actually, I didn't, uh, like I didn't provide my part-time experience when I was coming to Canada. And I came in 2012, lawyer said they don't have those records whoever, you know, whatever the work experience you had in your back home, they didn't have that in the records at that time. But now from 2015, they are carrying all the records. So you have to disclose if you have any full-time or part-time work experience back home, you have to disclose when you're coming to Canada for the first time. So this was two years part-time experience. I had in a different field, but I showed it for, you know, secret, keep it secret. <laughs> I showed it that like I'm working for my uncle. And I genuinely had work experience because I was working in a different part-time jobs. So that was like approximately two years. And guess what? That freaking thing saved my life. Saved my life not kicking out from Canada. Literally, if I would not have done that, I would be left Canada and I don't know if I would have come or I don't know where I would be. So if you have any work experience back home, one year full-time or two years part-time, equals to one year full time disclose that when you're applying for your education and that's what i did all of a sudden my points increased to almost like 30 or 40 literally like before one or two months before my work permit expired i got my application got picked up of course after that it took six months my ex permit expired and uh, you know i talked about those details in the other video check out that but long story short I was super stressed out this throughout this whole process because you know I don't have my permanent residency. I love to live in this beautiful country. Look at that, how beautiful this is. So you ha you don't have to go through this. If you just recap my whole story, why it took me so long? One, myself. I'm the dumb asshole. I would have I should have read read for IELTS super seriously and get that freaking score and get the points and get the PR. I didn't do that. And number two, I should have disclosed, I should have known about this part-time experience and which I didn't put in in my first year, second year. I would have qualified at that time. I put it in my third year. So this took so long, three years, like after getting, after getting my work permit, after working full-time job for three years, then I got my permanent residency. I don't think you have to go through that process 
if you are watching this video that means you got some tips so that's that's how i was finally able to get guess what when i got my like literally i received my green permanent residency card on the canada day and that's um, i i believe in 2000 14, 15, 16, 17, 2017 on the Canada day, which is like in June, I received uh, June 4th. Man, I'm, I'm so dumb with this dates. But on the Canada day, finally Canada <laughs> recognized my hard work and gave me my permanent residency. So that's the, that's the story. Let me know how do you like the story so far. Let me know in the comments below and let me know if you like this view, Windsor, Detroit view. Hit that thumbs up button for the view and hit the thumbs up button for my um, story and make sure you check out the other videos in the series um, leave a comment below where you are watching this video from and how is your journey going so far i would love to hear other immigrant students stories if you have faced any challenges so let me know in the comments below and see you in the next video have a wonderful day